Uh, welcome to our interview, Professor Hirsch. And today we are honored to do the interview with you about with the questions about the conference and some of your studies. Well, first of all, as you are the CEO of IASLC, so how do you look at the WCLC conference held in Yokohama this year? So uh, the WCLC, the World Lung, the World Conference on Lung Cancer. Uh, is the main conference on lung cancer and thoracic malignancies. And uh, we are very proud uh, to be hosted in uh, Japan and in Yokohama. Japan has a significant history in our organization their contribution to science in lung cancer, their contributions to the ISLC as an organization has been over decades uh, very important. So uh, it is important for us and significant to be in Japan to have the premier lung cancer meeting held in Yokohama. So what are the highlights of the conference and what is the distinctive change in the field of lung cancer compared with last year? Well, uh, the progress in lung cancer goes very fast and it goes very fast in many areas, particularly in the treatment of patients with advanced lung cancer. And uh, when I say that, um, I am thinking mainly on development on new targeted therapies and also on, of course, immunotherapy, where lung cancer now has become a role model for development of new treatments uh, in cancer. So immunotherapy is a strong component to this uh, World Conference on Lung Cancer. Mm -hmm. However, there are certainly a lot of very good scientific contributions which has not yet come to clinical studies and to the patients, but make the pathway for future new therapies. Uh, currently, the WCLC is held every year. So do you have any pressure to organize such a grand international event every year? And what is the challenge to hold such a grand event? When ISLC uh, decided to do annual world conferences, there was among uh, some members, some skepticism. Could we really have content to annual meetings? Could we afford it? Would it be interest to have annual meetings? And this meeting has almost 7,000 participants. The the scientific level has been extremely high. I think this is a clear evidence that the organization made a, the right decision to move to annual meetings. And uh, I think uh, we will see um, further rapid progress further interest uh, in the future. So um, I'm not concerned anymore. I think that was the right decision and uh, we are looking forward already to the next meeting in 2018 in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So what's, what is your prospects for the WCLC coming next year? Um, my prospect is that we will see increased scientific contribution to the meetings. We will see more and more clinical trials. 
we will include more and more nurses, patients, advocates, and other allied health personnel. So it will be a much broader range of participation in the future. This organization started with being uh, only ac academic investigators, but today there is a broad representation including nurses, patients, advocates, and allied health personnel. Since you chair the press conference now on the topic identification of PD-1 and his history, and some of the young Chinese young doctor would also like to ask you some question in this field. Well, first of all, the doctor said he is interested in the heterogeneity of PD-1 and PD-L1 detection and expression. However, it does not know whether soluble PD-1 and PD-L1 expression can be detected in the peripheral blood. And what is the method of the peripheral blood detection? Is there a more recognized detection method? Uh, so this is a good question. Um, can we replace tissue uh, examination with blood-based uh, examination for PDL1 expression? And uh, we don't have much data yet uh, from blood-based assays uh, for PDL1. We get more and more data for mutation burden uh, based on uh, blood as blood-based assays, uh, but not much on PDL1. But it might be in the future we will get more data and more studies. So it is an an, um, an uh, possibility in the future. But currently, PDL1 expression is based on tissue. Mm -hmm. So, what are the roles and prospects of PD1 and PDL1 inhibitors in the treatment of small cell lung cancer? Small cell lung cancer. Mm -hmm. We have uh, seen encouraging data in small cell also, not as much data yet as in non-small cell, but um, uh, we have seen some encouraging data in small cell, and particularly now at this meeting, uh, we have seen uh, interesting data based on Checkmate 32 study, which is nivolumab plus ipilimumab, and uh, this study has been retrospective and analyzed with regard to tumor mutation burden. And tumor mutation burden seem to be a very good predictor for efficacy of the combined therapy. So um, I think uh, this study is very interesting and uh, lead to other studies in small cell lung cancer looking into tumor mutation burden as a predictive biomarker. Um, is there any progress on the resistance molecular mechanisms of the third generation of EGFR inhibitors? That is uh, still a very novel uh, area and with very little clinical data. So uh, there are certainly a lot of uh, laboratories who are looking into resistant mechanisms for immunotherapy, but we don't have much of clinical data yet. So there is not much information we can use for clinical practice. It is practically no information yet available 
for use in clinical practice. But the train goes very fast, and I'm sure within a few years we, ha we will have a lot more data on resistant mechanisms for immunotherapy, but we are not there yet. For the third generation of the EGFR inhibitors, how to choose the molecular target drug? Uh, so now we are switching to EGFR targeted therapies and uh, your question is about the third generation EGFR TKI represented by ozimertinib um, and uh, uh, as you know, the FLORA study clearly showed the role of third generation in first-line setting was very good. The FLORA study compared third generation EGFR TKI with first generation EGFR TKI and clearly showed better outcome with third generation. No, uh, we don't know exactly what the resistant mechanisms are for ozimertinib. We know quite a bit for first and second uh, generation, uh, but not for third generation. So we don't know yet what will be the best sequence of therapy for EGFR mutant patients or patients with EGFR mutant tumors that needs to be studied in the future okay thank you thank you very much professor thank you